this morning. Glad to see some familiar faces. Glad to see some visitors. It's always good to, to see some fresh faces in God's house. That means that y'all are sharing about the church and that the church is growing. That's always a wonderful thing. So this morning we're going to start out with a song on page 92. Y'all grab your hymnals, page 92. How many of you were saved this morning? Say amen. 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 How many of you remember that time that you had just a little talk with Jesus? That's what we're going to be singing this morning, page 92. Let's go ahead and stand, page 92, just a little talk with Jesus. Praise the Lord for that. We've been praying for Brother Noah Collins, and uh, he got to come home from the, from the hospital, and at one time, they didn't think he'd ever leave that place. But he's at home, thanks to the Lord, give glory to his name. Amen. Any others this morning? Anthony Walker. Anthony Walker. Let's remember that one this morning. Any others? All right. If not, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Ask the Lord to bless our services. Brother Tim Harry, would you pray for us this morning?
be seated. <laughs> and it's good to see the Lord's house this morning. I normally try my best to get around and give everyone, uh, shake everybody's hand. This morning, our Sunday school lesson was just so good, we could not stop, and we got up a little late and uh, went back and visited with those in the back today, so it's so good to, to be here. But it, I, I promise you, I'll try to shake your all, all your hands when you go out the door, but it's good to have you. We're so thankful for you being here this morning. We've got a great service in store for you today. Looking forward to what God wants to do. I hope you come pray. I pray you come ready to worship this morning. Amen. My my heart's been geared toward worship this whole week, and uh, I need it. I need the Spirit to come so I can worship this morning. Amen. I need Him to lead us into worship this morning. So looking forward to that. Uh, a few announcements to coming up. Uh, don't forget our adult Bible study each week. It will just be adult Bible study this week, okay? All the youth services throughout the summer are going to be canceled. Uh, they're not canceled. They're just not. We don't do those during the summer because uh, we give our teachers a break. Uh, this is what we want you to do, though. If you've got kids, you bring them. I don't mind. I can. We, we can make do with them in here. You bring them to Bible study with you, and uh, we, we'll be able to, to still have service on that uh, adult Bible study at 7 p.m. Got Ladies Bible Study June the 7th and the 21st coming up in the month of June. That's at 6.30. Be much in prayer for all that. Mr. Cole does a great job for that. And I encourage you ladies, any of those that are not involved, get involved in that. It'll help you in your walk with the Lord. All right? Also, teen camp. We're coming up teen camp coming in a couple of weeks, uh, about two and a half, three weeks, I guess three weeks from now. If you've got a teenager that has a desire, they may want to go to camp this year, please see. Brother Dusty, Miss Anna, and Mr. Cole, before we leave, we always have a wonderful time at teen camp. Looking forward to taking a good group this year and seeing God work. Also, mandatory youth camp meeting May 30th at 2 p.m. If your child is going on youth camp, you need to be there. we got some papers for you to sign, some release forms, uh, and some uh, give us permission to spank them while we're gone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but, no, we do need your release forms and uh, to take them, so you'd be much in prayer for that. All right. I, I may have missed some, but if I did, Mr. Cole will screen them up there. I did. B big one. BBS. Don't forget that coming up. We need more workers. There's a sign-up sheet here. We've still got plenty of places, and we need some, uh, some teachers. We've got a nursery age and a missions uh, department, and the music needs to be a need a worker for those. So if you have... A desire to do that, I'm going to lay this up here. Please come and sign up for it after uh, church today. All right. Uh, let's go, Lord. Uh, uh, let's just worship this morning. Amen. Let's let the Lord just move at this time. Let me say this. I missed this, too. Uh, my mind's kind of running in circles this morning. It is Mission Sunday. Amen. This is our fourth Sunday offering. We always take up that for our missions offering each month. That missions plate is in the back. It's global missions. You can make that your deposit there, or you can make your donation there in that plate. You can send it in by the, the post office box on the back of the bulletin, or you can do it electronically through the GiveLify app. So don't forget, you made a faith promise to uh, put that in this week. And at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Edward to come around and give us a, our uh, monthly mission report. Good morning. Hey. Uh, I was sitting over there just a minute ago, and normally I have glasses on, and he's talking about the Spirit of God, and I tell you all what, I, I was excited over there because I know the Holy Ghost is here because it's in my heart. I tell you what, if there's ever a time in this world to be thankful that you're in this house today, today, right. and I tell you what, we live in a, in a crucial time, and uh, uh, the Word of God is real, that we live in it, and, uh, and these men of God are trying their best to reach this dying world. And you might not believe it, but they need help. And uh, y'all give it. And I'm not here to say beg you to give or nothing like that. I want to praise you for giving and thank you for what y'all's heart's been allowed to put in this here offering. As of today, we have $14,603, which is unbelievable. This is just our second year at it. And uh, we love the Lord. And what we need is, is men of God, and we need to take and manage this money the best we can. And I know these people talk to me, and they talk to Kevin, uh, John Shelley. Uh, they have went, him and Mike Van Horn, they delivered, and they went to Africa, and they preached the gospel, and they were soul saved, and the numbers is, is 
is good, and uh, we will need to remember them. And uh, they're preparing two more going to going to Africa, and there's a 40 foot and 80 foot, and they need funds to ship those, and, and there's some more supplies to go. This is not something that just ends. This is a continual ministry, and uh, we have to get involved, and we will whenever we see where they contact uh, Kevin or myself and they need some extra funds, we will try to get it to them as, as the church votes. And uh, so remember, uh, Mr. John and uh, Mike Van Horn, and I mean, these men are friends of ours. These are just not missionaries. They, they taught me and Kevin a pretty good bit, and uh, Shelly is a super guy. And But John Alvey is a special down in Brazil, and uh, he preached the gospel on the streets. He does a great job. And uh, and all he's doing is his ministry. He's preaching in the jails, and he's he's ministering to younger preachers and people around him. And uh, Ernie Emerson, now, the, I can't say much about him because this is on the Internet, and, and it'll mess up things. You know what I'm saying? But now, Ernie is in, he's up traveling this area here in Texas and all this stuff, getting more churches to support him. Uh, there's things going on where he's lived, he's losing his housing, and uh, they're trying their best to get a place to stay over there in, I can't say, but I'm not going to say, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a messed up world where he's at, and y'all know where he's at. If you don't, if Kevin wants to tell you, he can. The day something's in my mind, I'm just, it's just, it's just that the people that's fighting for us in this world to see people saved, they put their lives on the line. It's not like we do. We, we can speak and do just about what we want to do, but these people can't. And, uh, and where he's at, it's getting worse for him I, and on the news that I watch does. So y'all remember Ernie and his family. Uh, a, a home, a place to stay, a rent or wherever, and then more support to where they can live like we do. We, we live very, very comfortable, most of us do. And I, I don't mean nothing bad by that. But Shannon Mount, he's doing a great job. He's, uh, he's working on a container for another Bibles. And what they have a problem with storing these Bibles. And he's uh, going to take in his barn. And uh, where we want to help him with his barn, but he's going to take in, I don't know if you know that, do you know? Uh, he's going to take in some of his barn. And uh, he's going to use it for storage to put these Bibles in so he gets a container. They want to pay rent on the place. So we can, you could, you could talk to him if you wanted to, and I could talk to him and give him some money to, to remodel some room, a room in his barn to store these things. And uh, very, very on fire man for God. He, he was a blessing when he came. And uh, remember these guys and uh, their families. And you've got to realize these guys go away. They got to have traveling mercies and just think they get home just like us for a mom and daddy and, and brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts. And uh, y'all remember them, and Brother Kevin, I love you. And uh, thank, thank you, church. If y'all give today, that's fine. And uh, look, let it be a blessing. Don't let me encourage you to give when you don't want to give. I want you to give in a great heart. And uh, like our, our offerings that we have pledged to give, we can meet very easily for a long time if we don't give nothing. But just think if you love the Lord enough to give a little extra today, what we can have in store. That's, we want to lay up treasure. We want to lay up. We want this church to be able to. Our, one of them guys really needs something bad. Right, John? We wouldn't have to ask nobody to get, go through Kevin, get it to him. That's what we want to do. So what we're doing today is we're preparing. And uh, thank you all for what you all done. But let's prepare with the heart if you wish today. Let it be a blessing to you today if you decide to give. I love you. Let's go, let's, let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord, I love you. And I thank you, Lord, for everything you give me. I don't worry about my life, Lord. Hey, I don't really matter no more, Lord. I, I don't need to tell the church how old I am, but I'm 62 years old. And I tell you what, it don't matter. My, every day I grow closer to you, and I fear less what the devil can do to me because I know what God's power is in me. Lord, if the death shouldn't fear. I know, Lord, it's different. Young people, you know you want to see your family grow up. But, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for Kevin and his heart, Lord. Lord, Kevin's a man. He's just a man. But, Lord, he's accepted your call. 
And I ask you to touch him this morning where he can preach the gospel, Lord, that it'll be so, so touching, Lord, and be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost that if there's one trouble here this morning about his life, Lord, that he can make a move toward this altar and he can ask God, the Almighty God, it says, El should die, God, Almighty, God Almighty, the one that done it all, that sent his son to die on the cross, that you can ask at this altar anything, and he can fix it. He will fix it. If you'll accept it and listen to the teaching of God's word, you'll have victory in Jesus. Yes. And that's the way it works. By faith, by knowledge of him, and by time, you will realize how great a God he is. And I love you, Lord, and I ask you to touch everyone here this morning. I hope and pray they'll be motivated. And what Brother Kevin taught the other, in the Wednesday nights prior is commitment. That this church will make a commitment to serve and worship God. And in all of that, praise him for his blessings. I love you now. I ask you to send your angels to take care of us. Leading God in grace in this service and our lives to come. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me add just a couple things to that, Brother Edward. I did not get to fill him in on it. Brother Shannon Mount called me last week and said he was going to take in one of his, he's got a shed at his shop. He was going to take that in and make it a place to store Bibles. And uh, he said he needed a little bit of lumber to try to go around the, the, the farms. I got some of that, so we're going to try to get that to him and let him form it up. But this is what he did say. He didn't say he needed any money. But if you got a strong back or a strong back and a weak mind, he could use you, amen. <laughs> he said they're gonna try to finish that concrete themselves. Brother Mike Van Horn, Brother Shannon, a couple others gonna get down there. They're gonna try to finish that concrete so they can eliminate paying any money on that. So if you know anything about concrete, uh, or if you can pull a board or something, if you wanna get with me, I'll tell you the day that they're gonna set that up to pour that. We might go down and help them pour that out, and that would be a blessing to them. Also. Brother Chris Henderson Foundation, I didn't, or in his ministry, I didn't tell Brother Edward about this, but we've been noticing there's a guy uh, from San Pedro Sula, Honduras, that's been watching our uh, online videos and things, and uh, he's been commenting on our Facebook and thing, and his name is, is Pastor Daniel. And I uh, did not realize this, talked to Chris last week, and he said, yeah, that's Pastor Daniel, that's the man that you guys are supporting through my ministry in Honduras. He's tuning in every week, so Pastor Daniel, I, I wish I could speak Spanish. They said he didn't know a whole lot of English, but uh, if he's watching today, we're glad, we're thankful for you, we're praying for what you're doing in Honduras as well through Brother Chris Henderson. So uh, we've got a lot to be thankful for this morning, amen. God has been good, and if God's been good to you, just give a little bit back to him, and I promise you it'll be a blessing. Brother Dusty, let's uh, sing another song, and let's worship this morning. You know, Brother Kevin mentioned that he'd been praying about worship. Save my, my real good worship. I've been feeling bubbling up inside me for the choir special. But, you know, the two songs I picked out today that you know, I prayed about, you know, Brother Tony gets up here and he tells everybody, hey, you know, I, I pray about this, what the Lord wants me to, to what, what, what the Lord would want for us to sing. You know, well, at first I didn't really understand that. You know, I thought, well, hey, we're just going to get up here and sing a couple congregation songs and then we're going to preach. It's not about that. The Lord guides this worship. Right? So, hey. Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Hey, that's a worship song right there in my mind. Right? That time that we had Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Well, then, the next song that I felt the Lord, and I know I may sing this one every time I get up here. I can't remember. I don't keep track of what we sing when I sing this. But the next song we're going to sing is page 130. I never shall forget the day. Amen. That day that Jesus took all of my burdens and rolled them away. The song says, he made me happy, glad, and free. And then on that last part it says, I'll sing it and shout it. Y'all do me a favor, just appease me just for just one second today. When we get to that part where it's sing it and shout it, shout it, Amen. right? We got things to be shouting and praising for this morning, right? Amen. We know that we're saved, those who are saved. We know where we're going, right? God has done so much for us. All we can do is just give him praise because he's worthy. Page 130, I never shall forget the day. I'll let y'all stay seated.
appreciate y'all helping me on that. It's made me feel good, y'all shouting this morning. Any birthdays or anniversaries that we need to celebrate and recognize? None. We got nobody one. claiming. We got one back here. We got one. We got a birthday. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> birthday this morning. So let's stand and sing happy birthday. <coughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Hey, you look hey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it. Starting out, the ladies come in first. Are they all men? 110? Oh, make sure you pay attention to that. <coughs> Y'all just going to have to bear with me for just one second. You know, I made mention already. But you know, you, you pray about these things, what, what to sing, what to, what to share, you know, what, what God would want us to sing this morning. On my way into work this week, this song came on that the choir is going to sing, and you see, there are no orphans of God. You know, you think about that song, and you think, orphans of God, you know, it kind of makes you, makes you think, like, what, what is that talking about? You know, what, what is that talking about? I sat up here last night, and I don't know how many of y'all saw my Facebook post, but I sat up here last night just running over this song. Just had me a spell back here, just praising and worshiping. But Brother Kevin sat there and mentioned worship this morning, and so just a confirmation to me to know that this is what is meant to be sung. You know, part of this song says, Who here among us has not been broken? Who here among us is not without guilt or pain? And the next part of this song says, So many fallen. And I thought, Good Lord, that's all of us. All of us have fallen. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible tells us. We all. We all come short, right? So everybody in here, we all have reason to shout and praise this morning because, you know, the Lord could have just won. He could have just saved us and left us alone, right? But he didn't do that. He saves us, and then he keeps blessing us. He keeps working things out for us. Or, you know what? We could have been something that turned around and, and ran away like that prodigal son. And this is what hit me in the car. That prodigal son that ran off. Some people have been like, no, my child done been wrong. I ain't ever going to talk to him again and walk away. But this song right here says there are no orphans of God. He will stand there just like the, just like the lost sheep. He goes searching after that 99. Leave the 99 go back to the one. Just like the prodigal son. He turned around and he'll stand there with open arms waiting and meets him. And the Bible says he fell on him and greeted him with a kiss. And covered him over. So this song this morning, there are no orphans of God. Just think about this morning what God has done for you. No matter how far you ran off, there's nothing. Or no matter how far you're running off. Let's put it that way. Because that's where I was years ago. I was still running away from God. But yet he was still just like an old hound dog chasing behind me, waiting for me to turn around and come to myself, as the Bible says. So nothing that I've done will ever take me away from God's love. There are no orphans of God.
church can now be dismissed. singing choir. I enjoyed that so very much. I enjoyed the, the sweet congregational songs that we sang. Glad God didn't have any orphans this morning. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, for as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption Amen. whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, we got some foster families in here. We got some people that's taken in orphans before, didn't have a family, took them under their wing. Now, some of you, let me say this, if, you, if you're part of that ministry and there's more than a couple in our church, thank you for doing that. And uh, some of them have even adopted those orphans. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God will adopt everybody. That's Amen. Right. God says this, I don't, there's not any orphans. If you want to come, he said, if you need a family, he says, come unto me. And you can cry, Abba, Father. That word that says, that word Abba there, Abba, Father, it, it translates into a sweet word called Daddy. Amen. He said, you come call me Daddy. I'll be your Daddy. I'll be your Father this morning. And, uh, boy, I'm thankful for that this morning. thankful that God is so good. Uh, even when I'm bad, he's still good. Amen. Right. Even when I am fall short, he makes up the difference, and I'm thankful for that today. We're going to be in the book of Job this morning in the Old Testament, if you want to turn. The book of Job, I'm going to read just a couple of, uh, of verses in the book of Job, chapter number one. Job is in the Old Testament right before the great book of Psalms and right after the book of Esther. And uh, you can turn there. If you don't have your Bible this morning, we'll have it on the screen. But look, we do this for an, uh, for you to have, but I, I do desire you to still bring your Bible and to still open your Bible and follow along to God's Word. And I like to hear those pages rustling. I like to hear the, the Bible being opened. And there's something special about this printed Bible that we have. And I know there's so many electronics nowadays, but there's just something special about these pages this morning. There's power in them, and uh, I, I encourage you to bring your Bible. If you're there this morning, let's stand to our feet for the reverence of the reading of God's Word. Let's read you a couple of verses. We're going to be in the whole first chapter of Job this morning, but I'm just going to read you the first uh, a couple of verses, beginning in verse number 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And said, Naked I came out my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you today as humbly as we know how. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Lord, I'm thankful for the spirit that you've sent already this way. But, God, I pray that you just sent a double portion this morning, God. Lord, I'm like Elisha, Lord. I just want a double portion, Lord, of what you've given us already, God. He saw Elijah and saw how uh, good you've been to him. And he said, I just want you to be doubly good to me. Lord, you've been so good to us uh, already this morning. But, Lord, I just pray that you pour out a double portion of your spirit now in this preaching hour. God, that you comfort hearts and speak to hearts, Lord, and encourage hearts, Lord, to worship this morning. God, my desire is to worship you, is to lift you up on high, God, and give you glory for you're so good this morning, God. And in the midst of all that we go through, no matter if it's trial or tribulation, you're still God and you're still worthy this morning, God. We lift you up. God, I ask you to cleanse me, Lord. I pray that you just uh, look upon me. And God, if there be anything unclean in me, God, I pray that you remove it, God. Oh, God, I pray that, Lord, you cleanse it through the blood of Jesus this morning. Lord, make me a vessel that can be used for your glory and your honor, Lord. I pray that you'd help some soul here this morning. If there be a lost one here, God, I pray that they see a need for a relationship with you. And, Lord, we'll give you the honor and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' sweet and precious name, amen. And amen. You may be seated. There's a story I, I read this week as I was preparing, and I come across it, and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, there was a story of a little boy named 
Johnny, his family was very spiritual, and they went to church each time the church doors were open. And from a young age, he was trained to go to church, and his family was going to go to church. And let me say this. I believe that's the way it ought to be today, amen. Your, your right. children ought not wonder whether we're going to church uh, on Sunday or not. It ought to be uh, something that we do as part of our lifestyle. But uh, Johnny's family was going to church, but on this particular Sunday, which happened to be Palm Sunday, before the Sunday before Easter, Johnny woke up that morning sick. He was coughing. He was running a fever. He was feeling bad. He had a headache. So his mom said, I'll stay at home with Johnny uh, and told her husband, said, you take the other kids and y'all go on to church uh, uh, to commemorate Palm Sunday. So they did. The father and the rest of the siblings went to church. Uh, Johnny stayed home with his mom. As the church service ended and his father and his other siblings, his sisters came back, they came in carrying palm leaves. And, uh, of course, they commemorated the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And, and they, Johnny saw these palm leaves that they had. And they said, he said, what are those palm leaves for? What are those branches for? And his sister said, oh, they held them over Jesus' head when he walked by. And Johnny, in frustration, just shook his head. And he said, that's just like me. He said, the one Sunday I miss church, Jesus shows up. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever felt like that before? You miss Sunday service one day and something Jesus does something really big? Listen, my desire this morning, my prayer all week has been that Jesus would show up in this place today. Amen. I want His Spirit to move. Him. I want us to be spurned to worship this morning because He's good and He's worthy. I want to preach on this topic this morning or this thought, a remarkable worship. We're going to see in the story of Job, this first chapter of the book of Job, Job has a remarkable worship. We see that uh, what Job does and when Job worships is remarkable uh, by modern standards or by society standards because all that Job went through. But we'll see this, that Job had something to worship about, amen. It wasn't because of the stuff he had, but it was because of the person he knew. Now listen, worship comes from the heart, from relationship. Worship comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ this morning. If you have a relationship with him this morning, you have an opportunity. And here in this time, you have a responsibility, child of God. Let me say this. It is our responsibility to lift his name up on high and worship him this morning in spirit and in truth. We have that opportunity to worship today. I wonder will we take hold of it. I wonder, would we take hold of that worship this morning and just worship inside of our hearts in your own way? Listen, a lot of us worship a lot of different ways. I, I'm kind of a shouter. Brother Edward's kind of a shouter. Brother Dusty's kind of a shouter. You may not be a shouter. You don't have to shout to worship this morning. Listen, a lot of folks like to raise their hand. I do that. I like to raise my hand. You don't have to raise your hand to worship this morning. Listen, there are all different uh, ways that you can worship and express yourself to God today. But whatever makes you comfortable, whatever you see fit to worship, why you need to worship today. Because, listen, no matter what's going on in your life this morning, God is still God. And God still loves you. And God sent his son to die on the old rugged cross for you this morning. He gave his life for you. So that gives us an opportunity and a reason for us to worship. I pray this morning that Jesus would come in this place. He, he's, listen, he's already here this morning. Amen. This is his house. We come to his house this morning. He is here. But listen, this is the thing. Will we worship with him this morning? Will we commune with him this morning? He's worthy to be worshipped. I thought about this analogy. Uh, this is just the old redneck analogy that I come up with in my mind. This is the kind of stuff that goes through my brain, brother. brother. I, I, I hear all these preachers, and they, they come up with these elegant illustrations. I think, man, that is so awesome, but that just ain't me. Hey, man, I'm simple. This is the illustration I thought about worship. Have y'all ever had a dead battery before? It seems like that's a, a, a plague that plagues my equipment in my farm. Almost every time I get on a piece of equipment that's been sitting for a while, that battery will be dead. Or I try to get in a truck that's been sitting for a while, that battery will be dead. So you know what we got to do to get that battery, uh, some juice to get it going? we got to go get them jumper cables. And I thought, you know what the jumper cables are for your dead battery this morning? The jumper cables between God 
and your dead battery this morning is worship. Now that's pretty, that's pretty simple right there. And that's not very eloquent, but I'm here to tell you this morning, if you need your battery jumped this morning, worship. Connect your worship to the God of all glory and let him jump your battery this morning. Let him fill you up and give you something on the inside, give you some juice that you might be able to worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. I know probably some of you here this morning are tired. You've had a trying week. It's the end of the school year. Teachers, somebody say amen right there. Some of y'all are praising God this morning because you ain't got to go back. Some of y'all are saying, Lord, why did you make us go an extra week? Because Carroll County has got to go back and go a whole extra week. But listen, it's been a trying week for some of you. Maybe it's been in your job. Your work has been exhausting. I know how that feels. When you get more on your plate than your plate can hold, it can exhaust you. And sometimes that exhaustion can run your spiritual body, not just physically, but spiritually can exhaust you and run you down. It may be that uh, your, your relationships were strained this week. Maybe you and your husband or you and your wife had a, uh, had a strain in your relationship. Maybe uh, your significant other uh, and you just didn't get along, didn't have a good week, and it just drained your spirit this week. Uh, maybe this week that uh, you're, uh, you, you've been wide open from award ceremonies to field days. Somebody that went to Olympic Day say amen. Y'all know how Olympic Day can do that. It can drain you. But you went to Olympic Day, field day at school. Then you run to your child's award ceremony this week. Then you got done with that. And you had to go to graduation. Or you had to go to a celebration, a graduation party, or an end of school party. And you felt like you run here, there, and everywhere. And your battery is sitting on dead this morning. Let me tell you what to do. Take them jumper cables of worship. Hook it to your battery. And then hook it up to him. Just do like that right there up in the air and he'll hook on. Amen. Right. He'll hook on to that thing and he will charge your battery and you can get worship going on. You can get recharged and revived this morning. Nothing can charge your spirit like worshiping God. I want to share it to you this morning that worship can take place no matter what you're going through. Worship should not be based upon our circumstances. Listen to me this morning. I think this is where we get it wrong so often. We think, well, my life's got to be perfect before I can come in the Lord's house and shout. Boy, everything, my bank account's got to be full. Oh, my car's got to be running good. All my relationships have to be just hunky-dory. All that's got to take place before I can come in and say, good, uh, and say, glory to God, God's been good to me. Well, listen, it doesn't matter if everything you've got is broken this morning. It don't matter if you're in the red in your bank account. Don't matter if you got you got more bills than you got to pay, amen. It doesn't matter. All those things are they're 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 insignificant compared to worship. Because listen, if you're worshiping because of all them things, you're worshiping your stuff and your circumstances and not God. But listen, this morning he's worthy because he's still God. We can still worship this morning because he's God. I want to show you this morning by the example of Job that you can still worship this morning when you're alive. Is falling down. But to do that, we need to examine a little bit into Job's life. So I want to look uh, just a few moments in the first part of this chapter. In verse number one, the Bible uh, says, There was a man in the lands of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feareth God and escheweth evil. First and foremost, we got to look at Job's great life to understand the power and the remarkableness of Job's worship this morning. We got to examine his life and look into his life. I want you to see, number one, it was a blessed, or excuse me, a blameless life. The Bible says that this man was perfect and upright. Job's character and, con and conduct and character was unmatched by anybody living on the face of the planet at this time. Job was the, what was the most holy man. He was the most blessed man on all of the earth at this time. The Bible says he was perfect. And unright. What does that word mean, perfect? Does that mean that he was sinless without sin? No, it does not mean that he was sinless and did not have any sin. It meant he was still a sinner. He still made problems. He, he still made mistakes. But what it meant was that nobody could accuse Job of living in sin. He couldn't. He didn't live.
his life. When he made a mistake, he got it right. But he didn't live his life in sin. He just didn't go and do the simple things each and every day. How can we live a perfect Christian life in front of others? Will we not make mistakes? No. Listen, we'll make mistakes every day, but you won't live your life in sin. Amen. You won't live in that, that destitute of sin and keep doing those things over and over again. You'll get those things right with God and you can be perfect in that sense of the word. Not only was that, he lived above repro reproach. And that's how God calls all of us to live this morning. I want you to know something. God calls us to live above reproach that no man can bring accusation into our lives. We can be like Job today. You say, well, preacher, we live in a rough time. We live in the middle of a bunch of mess, and I'm bombarded with it every day. You're right, we do. But listen, we can still live that way. We can live above that. We have called, and you know how we can do that? Through the power of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. You can't do it by yourself. I can't do it by myself. But when we get up this morning, we say, Lord, I want you to empower me today. I want you to give me the spirit to say no to those things that are wrong. I want you to give me the power to say yes to the things that are right. He will empower you and uh, enable you to live that spirit, uh, uh, perfect life today uh, the, in the sense of the word. Not only was he perfect, but he was upright. That means that he was straight. The Hebrew word is yes, sir, which means honest or truthful. He was upright in all of his dealings, and all the dealings that he had, he did everything just exactly right. So no one could bring accusation in that area of his life. Not only that, but it said he feared God. Did that mean that he cowered down and he was afraid to do anything wrong because God was, would get upset with him and rain fire and brimstone down? No, that's not what, it, what the word means. The word there, feareth God, means that he reverenced God. Listen, you don't have to fear God above, amen? You don't have to cower down in cowardice thinking when I make a mistake, God's just, out, just waiting up there with his hand clenched trying to reach down and get me. That ain't our God, amen? Listen, he's a just God and he pulls out punishment when punishment is due. But listen, this is, our God is a God that, that, that will uh, make sure that you're right when you need to be right. He, he's truthful and honest. He, he is a God, he reverence God. He loved God. I want you to know something about the book of Job this morning. I know it's halfway in your Bible, but that is the first book that was ever written. That came before Genesis. That came before all those books of the law. Job was the first one ever penned. They say, who wrote it? I don't know who wrote it. Well, I guess we'll find out when we get to heaven. But somebody had to have some insight, amen, or the Holy Spirit had to show them a whole different scene because we're about to see there's some things that go on that somebody on earth just couldn't be witness to, bro. But listen, it, it was written before time. So Job didn't have a Bible to go on. Job didn't have a whole lot of preaching to go on, Brother Clyde. Job just had a relationship with God. He walked with God, and he reverenced his maker. He knew who he was. Paul, uh, Job said this in, one of his, uh, in part of this book. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. He walked with him, and he had reverence for him. Not only that, but it said he eschewed evil. That means he turned away from it. He didn't take part in it, and he didn't look, go out looking for it. thought about this. as I read this little story. I thought it was good. It went there. It, there was an applicant filling out a job application one day, and they said this. The, the job application got down to that question. says, have you ever been arrested before? And they marked No. But you know, right up under that, they always give you a spot, Miss Sherry. If you say yes, they want you to tell them what you got arrested for, right? She, the person marked, no, I've never been arrested. But when it said why, they wrote in that, never got caught. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all can say amen right there. There's a lot of things we've done in our life that we probably could have gotten in trouble for, but we never got caught, and so we, therefore we've never been arrested. But listen, Job never got caught in sin. He eschewed evil. You know why he never got caught in sin? Because he never lived around sin. You know how the best way to keep out of sin? Don't live around sin. Eschew it. Get away from it. Move away as fast as you can. When Job saw evil coming or when Job saw sin coming, Job said, i got to get away from here and get over here to where I can get back in the fellowship of God. 
And listen, that's a good example for all of us to take this morning. When you see sin coming, turn around and go the other way. That'll keep you out of sin. That'll keep you away from sin. You say, well, what if there's sin over there? Well, just start looking up, brother. Amen. Just start looking up to Jesus and call on him saying, I need you to get this sin away from my life. And he will. That's what Job did. He escheweth evil. He got away from sin. Job, at this point, he's got a great life. Amen. He's got a great testimony. He's got a great life that he is a good, upright, perfect man that feareth God. But you see, not only it doesn't go stop there, he's got a blessed life. Let's look at the next part. It says in verse 2, And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Amen. He had a lot of beautiful children, had seven sons and three daughters. God had made him fruitful. Uh, and he was able to do that. Not only did he have that big old family, but he was able to take care of them. Because he had great substance. The Bible says he had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camel. He had 500 yoke of oxen. What that means is that's a 500 teams of oxen. Amen. He actually had 1,000 all in, in, in one. But he had a 500 yoke. He had 500 female donkeys. His blessings. He was fully blessed by God. And if there's ever been a man on the face of the planet that could look up to God and say, God, I want to thank you for all you give me, it was Job. Amen. Listen, I think there's a lot of us in here in the same place as Job that we can look around at all that God has given us and all that God has done in our life and say, God, I thank you for all you've done. You've been good to me. You've blessed me far above measure this morning. But I think this this morning. I don't think it's a coincidence that Job had a great life, great testimony. He also had great blessings. Those things work together. Listen, when you live right and do right for God, God will bless those things. He'll bless and honor a life that honors Him. Amen? Does that mean that you're all going to have 7,000 sheep and 300 cows? No, that's not what it means. But it just means that when you live for God and do right for God, God will be good to you. Amen? Right. God will give you what you need when you need it. He'll take care of things. He'll pull things out that you didn't see coming. And He'll bless your life with it. So living right correlates with a blessed life. I like what the Bible says in Psalms chapter number 1, verse number 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doeth he meditate day and night. He said, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, he doeth shall prosper. Bible says those that live good will prosper, brother. That live good for God will prosper. We see he's got a blameless life, and he's got a great life, a great testimony, and he's got a blessed life. He's been blessed beyond measure. But I want you to see if we'll look just a little bit further. And I'm not going to read all this. I'm out of time already. But you'll see Job's about to have a terrible day. There's a meeting that takes place in heaven. Number two, I want you to look at Job's terrible day. There's a meeting that takes place in heaven. God, and he, he calls a meeting, and all the sons of God come before him and begin to, to, to tell him all about what's going on. And Satan comes at the same time. And God looks at Satan and says, what are you doing, Satan? Where have you been? What have you been up to? He said, oh, I've just been going to and fro from the earth and back and forth. He said, just seeing who I can tear up and see who I can mess up. Just see who I can destroy their life. Let me say this this morning. He's still doing that today. He's still doing that today. He's walking around trying to mess up your life and tear up your family and do all this stuff. That is Satan at work. And this is what he said. He said, well, uh, Job, have you considered my servant, Job? Brother Harold Wilkinson, a great Bible a lot, uh, commentator and theologian that, that done a lot of the background work for the FBI Institute in his book, the, uh, the Bible, throughout the Bible that we got through that, he makes this quote in there. He says, have your ears been burning? He says, God might have brought up your name to Satan this morning. I can just tell you, I just seen my ears not burning that way, amen? <laughs> I don't want God to talk about me when Satan is up there. Because this is what God pretty much does. He says, Satan, where do you been? He said, I've been going seeing who all I can mess up. And he said, well, have you thought about going down to Job's house? He said, he's my, he's my man. Have you thought about messing with Job? The devil just kind of laughs and looks at God and says, God, you know I can't do that. He said, you got a hedge around his house. I can't get there. Listen, let me say this this morning and encourage somebody's heart today. 
God's got a hedge around you. If you know him as, as Lord and Savior, he's put a hedge around your life. And the only way Satan could get in and, to, and get at you, if God says, all right, Satan, you can have it. This is what God told Satan about Job. He said, all right, Satan, uh, I, I believe you, you can go uh, attack him. And he, this is what Satan said to God. He said, God, the only reason he served you, the only reason he loves you so much is because you've been so good to him. He said, if you take away all the stuff that he's got, all those camel and those sheep and all that stuff, and if you take all that stuff away, he'll turn around and curse you to your, mind, or to your face. He said, he'll just, all the only reason that he's serving you because of all the th blessings you give me. And this is what God said. He said, all right, Satan, you can have him. Go and do whatever you want to to him. You can take whatever you want from him. Just don't touch him. And Satan said, all right, let me say this this morning. God's got a hedge around your life. And he's protecting you. And Satan cannot just attack you or try to hurt you or try to discourage you. Listen, he can't hurt you no way. You're covered in the blood this morning, amen? Right. But listen, he can, he can frustrate you. He can oppress you. And the only reason, the only way he can do that is God opens that head and says, all right, Satan, you can attack me. And the only reason God would do that, listen to me this morning, if you don't get nothing else, I want you to get this. If the only reason God would do that this morning is God has the confidence in knowing that you're going to be all right. Amen. He knows that you're going to look to him and you're going to get through this thing. Listen, when Satan attacks a lot of people, he, he, they'll, they'll give up and quit. But listen, God will only allow him to attack you because he knows where you are and what you've been doing. Listen, the only reason he let Satan in at Job because he knew Job's heart. He knew Job's character. He knew that Job wasn't going to get him and turn around and curse him to his face. He said, I know Job and I know where he stands. I know how he walks. He said, Satan, you can do all that you want to do to him. Take all this stuff away and see what he does. So he has a terrible day. Satan goes and takes everything. I want you to read. You just read this in 13 through 19. Uh, this, this takes place. I don't have time to read all the scripture this morning. But they had all gathered together, and Job gets a messenger, and he came to him, and he said, Hey, listen, all the oxen were plowing, and all the donkeys were feeding. He said, and the, and the sapiens come down and attacked them and, and killed all of our servants and stole all your, your donkeys and all of your oxen. They're gone. And all your servants that were working in and watching over them, they're dead. Except me. I'm the only one that made it. But I come to tell you, you don't got them no more. You don't have anything like that anymore. And as the Bible says, as he was talking... Somebody else came running in, and he said, oh, uh, Brother Job, he said, lightning, there was a storm that blowed up out there, and lightning hit the field and started a fire and burned up all your sheep, and all they're, they're all gone, and nobody survived out there. The tenders and all, they're all dead except me. I come to tell you. So you don't have any sheep. Then another one, as he's talking, comes in and says, listen, Job, I got some bad news. Listen, listen, they haven't even got through telling all their stories, and somebody else is coming up. He says, I got some more bad news, Job. He says, uh, the Chaldeans have come down and they, they fell upon the camels and they carried them away and they killed all your servants. I'm the only one left. So now you ain't got no sheep. You ain't got no camels. You got no oxen. You got no donkeys. You got nothing left except your family. And about that time, here comes another one limping in. He says, Joe, I got some really bad news. He said, your kids have all got together having a, 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 a get together and they were all in the same house and a tornado just swept through that place knocked all four posts out of that house and it fell down on top of them and every one of them are dead. Now, there's an old saying that says when it rains, it pours. And I believe it's pouring on Job's head right now because he's just got everything that he had taken away. He's had a terrible day. But let me say this to you this morning. Some of y'all, we may not to this extent, I believe this is probably one of the worst days that anybody has ever had in their life. But some of us have had some terrible days before, amen? Satan has got a hope to you and tried to shake your life. And you've had some bad days. And he's gotten, he's attacked you. And he's taken some things from you before. But listen to this. Great lives will experience bad days. All of us are going to experience bad days sometime or another. When we live for God, Satan's going to try to attack. And all great lives will experience bad days. But listen to this. My wife says this a lot of times. I, this is Miss Nicole's quote. I stole it from her. She writes half of my sermons anyway. Amen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But she did say this. 
She did say that she said a bad day does not mean you got a bad life. Sometimes she has to remind me of that because sometimes my days get pretty bad. Sometimes I get pretty upset and I'll come in and I'll say, oh, this day, wish I wouldn't even have got up this morning. And she said, well, it's just a bad day. It's not a bad life. And we'll all, great lives, we'll all experience bad days. But because we have a bad day, doesn't mean we've got a bad life. Job just had the most terrible day in the, in, in the history of, of, of days. I mean, he just lost everything he had. Job got up that morning with everything a man could want. Every single thing a man could want. He had a good family, good possessions, wealthy, clout. He had, he had a, a reputation. He had all these things. And when he went to bed that night, he had nothing. He woke up with everything and went to bed with nothing. That just sort of served as a reminder for all of us this morning. You better not trust too much in all that you have because they can be gone just like that. But I want you to notice what Job done. I'm done right here. This, I'm, I'm going to uh, sum this up. I want you to see the response, Job's response to this. After he lost all that, said Job then arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head fell down upon the ground. He did what most of us would do. He mourned. The Bible said that he completely mourned. What he done when they, when they would do that in the old days, they would rip their mantle and their coat. That means they were in mourning. They would shave their head was a symbol that they were in mourning, that something bad had happened, that they had had a bad day, and he mourned. Listen, I want you to tell you, when we all have a day like that, we'll all do some mourning. Listen, it's okay to mourn when you have bad days. It's okay to have a, a little bit of a pity party sometimes. Sometimes you may have to pat yourself on the back and say, it was bad, but maybe tomorrow will be better. That's exactly what Job done. He just he got down in mourning because he was upset. Listen, you can't lose all that and not have mourning in your heart. But listen, this is what he said. This is what happened next. That That's unavoidable, and that is totally what everyone does when something like that happens. But don't you see what happens next is what is remarkable. It says he arose, rent his mantle, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground. And he worshipped. The most remarkable thing that I could ever remember and ever read is seeing all that Job lost. And Job said this, I'm just going to go worship. You know what that tells me today? That tells me that Job wasn't worshipping all that he had. He was worshipping all the one that gave it to him. Amen. That he could lose everything that he had but still be able to worship. And let me say this this morning. A lot of us think you got to be happy and up, upbeat and clapping and shouting and all that to worship. You ain't got to be like that to worship. Job was mourning. He had his head shaved. He was sitting in the ashes of all of his life they had done, but he still worshiped. Listen, you can mourn. You can have a bad day and still worship God at the very same time because God is good. It's not about all the stuff that you've lost. It's about the one who gave it to you. What that tells me here this morning is Job realized the one that had given him all of his blessings was more important to him than all the blessings that he had. The one that had provided all the provision for him was more important to him than all the provision that he had had. And Job was saying, listen, I can lose all that I got, and I can lose, and in chapter 2, he loses his health too. But Job continues to worship God. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, church, is this. No matter where you're at or what you're going through, you can still worship God this morning. Listen, and you don't have to clap and you don't have to shout. But I tell you what you do in your heart. There can be some worship that goes on between you and God. You can sit down in your tears and say, God, everything's falling apart, but I still love you. I still want you to do uh, all that you want for me. Listen, I just love you this morning and worship you. You can still worship in the midst of all that you lost. He had lost everything except God. Listen, you can't never lose God, amen. Right. He'll never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And if we can't worship about nothing else, that's enough this morning, amen. That is enough to worship God and say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Let me say this. For all of us that don't have bad, that's not had a bad day, and God has blessed us abundantly, we ain't got no excuse not to worship, amen. There's a lot of folks that will try to make an excuse and say, well, things ain't been good and I just can't get my heart right. I just can't worship. That ain't really an excuse either. But for those of us that God has been good to and poured his blessings out, boy, we ought to come into this place every day and say, Lord, I love you and I thank you for what you've done for me. You've been so good. 
I'm going to close with this, and I'm done this morning. I wonder this morning, are we worshiping the things that God gives us, or are we worshiping the God that gives us? Sometimes our hearts can get blinded by the things, and the only reason we serve God and worship God is because he gives us things, and he's good to us. But I wonder this morning, are we worshiping those things? Would we still worship God if he took away all of our things and the things that he has given us? Would we still be obedient and worship this morning? Or would we just be like a heathen and say, I, I, I can't do that because I'm mad because I lost everything I got. Let me tell you this story and I'm done. We got a herd of puppies at our house. By the way, if anybody needs a puppy, we got some we can rehome. Amen? They're not very pretty. They're Sooners, but they're ours. Amen? Our, our little dog, Rose, was supposed to be uh, fixed and not able to have babies and something happened that guess by the grace of God he just knew we needed some more puppies <laughs> she come up pregnant and, and he was going to have puppies and these little puppies I mean they're not heads amen they don't know nothing but playing and fighting and tearing stuff up I thought it's a wonder we even still have puppies because they delivered my wife's Mother's Day hat out there and throwed it out on the ground, and them puppies tore it up. Amen? I can't believe we still got them. I thought she would have already re-gifted them to somebody. <laughs> but she had, and we still got them. But I've noticed something about them puppies lately. They eat. How many of y'all know puppies will eat up some food? And every day, they sitting there waiting on me to come out the door because they know I pour the food out in the bucket in the morning. When I leave, I try to. And uh, they're always waiting on me. And they're just, they see me rattle that bag, get that bag down, them puppies start scurrying around, they start hitting that bowl that I pour it in. Just can't wait for me to get that food in that bowl so they can jump in and just rrr, 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 and tear it up. And them puppies are just there waiting, and I pour that food in, and them puppies will be going just, just grabbing it as fast as they can grab it. But their mama, Rose, she's been there with us a lot longer several silver years. I don't know how long we've had Rose, but we've had her a long time. You know what Rose does? It's not because she's old. It's not because she's been there a while. Rose don't care a whole lot about the food. When the puppies are all focused on the food, Rose is looking up at me. And all, all Rose is waiting for me to do is this right here. And when I do that right there, Rose is jumping up on me. And all she wants to do is for me to love her. And listen, she, she don't care about that food. She'll get some when them puppies get done. Right. But what she cares about is the master. Right. What she cares about is the one that pets her every day when she comes home. That's who she cares about. And that's the only thing she wants to care. Those puppies ain't learned that yet. They're, they're still looking for the food. Yeah, right. They're not worried about the man that feeds them. They just want the food. As long as I put food in there, they don't care about me. They won't even let me touch them. But Rose. Do that right there, and she jumps up. Why? Because she loves the provider more than the provision. Come on, brother. Exactly like we ought to be this yeah. morning. Listen, it ain't about what he gives us, and he's been good to us. It's about who he is and what he's done for us and what he will continue to do for us. Listen, worship is not about the stuff you have or the stuff you've lost. It's about who you have and who you know this morning. I wonder, would you worship him today? I wonder, would you forget about all the other stuff and say, well, I, I, things have been bad this week, and I just can't worship him. Sure you can. Because it ain't about the bad stuff, it's about him all along. Hey, everything that we do is all about him. It ain't got nothing to do with us or our stuff. It's all about him. Would you sit and look up at the master this morning? Would you just worship him? Would you love on him? I tell you, it helps my day, Brother Clive, when I get home and I get out of that truck, there's old Rose. She'll come running out there wagging her. She ain't got a tail. She's bob tail. But she'll be wagging her whole rear end like that right there. And she's gotten trained where she won't jump up on me. Unless I do that. If I do that, she's right up there. Just want me to do And then she what she does. She just starts to lift up. She'll lift on my hand, lift on my hand. If you go look up the word, you'll see what in, in, in the translation that word. That's exactly what it means. It means when a dog licks his master's hand. Man, good, She's worshiping the master every time he gets home. I wonder how many times we come to his house and we worship 
or how many times we come to this house and say, Lord, I just want you to give me that promotion. I just want you to give me that new job, or I just want you to give me that, that payment, or I want you to give me that truck, or I want you to give me that house, or I want you to give me all that. And all he's waiting for you to do is say, I just want you to love me. I just want you to love me. Hey, listen, when you love him, he'll give you all that stuff. How could Job worship after all that he lost? Because he realized it ain't about all that stuff. It was about God all along. You go read the rest of the story, you'll find out. God, hey, and listen, Job done nothing wrong. Let me say this this morning. You may be going through some stuff just like Job, and you ain't done nothing wrong. It may be just a test that God allows you to grow through so you can grow closer to him, and he can get a little bit more worship out of you this morning. But you'll see at the end of this story, Job got twice as much as he had before because God is good. Who will we worship this morning? I wonder if we stand to our feet this morning, do you need to worship? Is there something... But you can just come to this altar this morning and ask God to do. Maybe you just want to come and say, Lord, I don't need nothing today. I just want to tell you I love you. I want to worship you. I just want to worship you in spirit today. Whatever it may be this morning, I want you to share. I want you to pour your heart out to the Lord. If you do it where you're at or in the altar, whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, I want you to do that. I wonder if there'd be one here this morning that's lost. They don't have any idea of what I'm talking about because they've never experienced that relationship that Job had with his master. You can know that this morning. If you'll just come and ask Jesus to come to your heart and to save your soul and to cleanse you of all your sins, the Bible says all you have to do is ask. If you'll do it this morning, you'll come. We're going to pray this morning. I want you to go ahead and move. There's some already moving now. You can move. You don't have to wait. You come on. We're going to pray and then we're going to sing. I want you to do business with God this morning. Would you just love on him today and let us pray. Lord, I love you today. I love you for all that you are and what you've done. Lord, I thank you for loving me. Lord, I ask you to forgive me when I, Lord, don't worship you because things ain't going right, because the devil's got a hold of me. Lord, I realize that, Lord, you've got me protected, Lord. And Lord, it's just, it's just a trial that you're sending me through. Lord, help me to understand that. But Lord, there may be somebody else here today that's, that's dealing with that today. Would you touch them, Lord? Would you draw them to you today? Lord, would this, if there's ones that's lost, would you draw them under repentance today? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing, We're going to sing at this time. The Lord moved upon your heart. You come. Page 407, or you can look on the screen.